In this calculator tutorial, I want to show you about the library functions that they're generally called or some of the common functions that you'll tend to see um, in a college algebra class. The first function that we generally talk about is called the constant function. Up here would be the general equation of a constant function. Uh, y equals some real number b. B is just representing any real value called a literal constant. Uh, basically, this is a graph of a horizontal line. Uh, so if I say y equals 8, uh, that'll give me the graph of a constant function where y is always 8. Uh, or let's say you know y equals second caret key is pi. There's the graph of y equals pi. Pi is about 3.14. <clears throat> so there's about 3.14. Let me go ahead and go to the standard zoom here real quick. There we go. Okay, so the second library function is the linear function. Now, by linear function, we generally mean um, a non-zero slope. Obviously, the constant function is a line with zero slope, but the linear function we generally refer to non-zero slope. So this is an equation of any line where slope is positive or negative. So for example, y equals, uh, let's say, 3x plus negative uh, 6, or 3x minus 6 is the way that I'm typing it. And when I hit graph, there's a linear function. Uh, the third library function would be the square function, which sometimes is referred to as a parabola. So in the y equals screen, let me hit clear here. y equals screen, I could say y equals x and then hit the square key. Or I actually could use the caret key. I could say y equals x and use the caret key here, x raised to the power of 2. These actually will give me the exact same graphs. Um, and in fact, if I move my blinking cursor to the left of y2, hit enter a couple times, highlight what I call the magnifying glass feature. There we go. So I'm going to use what I call the magnifying glass feature. So it's going to graph y1. There's y1 real quick, and here comes y2 right on top of y1. So y1 and y2 are the same equation in essence, giving me the same graph we would call the square function. Then the, let's say, fourth library function right here would be the square root function. If I go back into my y equals screen, let me clear, clear, go back up to y1 here. So the square root key is above the square key. So I'm going to hit second square key, and there's square root of x, and let me close off my root. And I graph, there's the basic square root graph. Okay, the fifth graph of the library of functions would be, let's say, the cube function. Y equals x cubed is that basic equation. Let me hit clear here. Again, I can do x raised to the power of 3. That would give me the cube function. Or under the math key, and so let's say in y2, I do x, and then I hit the math key and number 3, you'll notice. Let me punch number three, gives me the cube. Okay, so here would be the graph of the basic cube function, y equals x to the third power. Then we have the cube root function. Now the easiest way to do the cube root function, let me clear these out of here. The easiest way to do the cube root function is back under the math key. So my blinking cursor is on y1, and I'm going to hit math and choose number four. I'll choose number four, and there's the cube root of x, and that's the cube root function. I hit graph, and we see that basic shape there. And then the reciprocal function, the next to the last of the library functions, is the graph of the equation y equals one divided by x hit graph and there's my reciprocal function. Now if you're looking in your book 
the reciprocal function actually looks a little bit prettier than this. Um, and in fact, if I do a zoom decimal, a zoom four, if I do a zoom decimal instead of a zoom standard, this is about how most books sketch the reciprocal function. So this is typically what you'll see in your textbook. But let me go back to the zoom standard. We'll see it in that window. It doesn't look as pretty, but there's the reciprocal function. And then the last function would be the absolute value function down here. So again, if I go back to the y equals screen, let me clear out that equation. Remember, absolute value is under math key. And then I have to click the right arrow to go to the num menu for number. So I'm going to go to the number menu, and it's the first option, which is already highlighted, ABS. So number one, ABS. So here's absolute value of X. And I'll hit graph, and there's that standard V shape. And keep in mind, in most textbooks, they'll talk about the library of functions in the sense that they want you to have these equations and graphs memorized. So I should be able to throw the absolute value equation on the board, let's say, and without you even touching your calculator, you could sketch this basic V graph. Or I could throw the y equals x squared equation on the board, and you know what the square function looks like, the standard parabola. So really, the calculator, again, is a tool by which we can check our work, help us visualize. But these library functions are generally talked about in the sense that they need to be memorized. Uh, and if you didn't have your calculator, you could sketch a rough graph of these equations uh, without the technology of the calculator.